around the start of October, I was getting ready to make another GIMP 3 video. But knowing the track record of, you know, hey, a release is coming soon. Hey guys, it's almost done. Hey, 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 GIMP 3 is going to be done by May. Oh, it's going to be done by June. Ah, oh, it's going to be done soon, I guess. I knew that there was no point making a video about it almost being done, because we've almost been done many, many times before. Back then, we had this post, development update crossing in on the 3.0 release candidate. At the time, they were 96% complete on the RC1 milestone with 11 issues remaining. How long were 11 issues going to take to resolve? Look, it could have been another year. Turns out, wasn't actually a year. Now, the last concrete plan I talked about is getting GIMP 3 released around the middle of the year for a Libre art conference. That didn't end up happening because some core developers ended up getting sick and things got delayed and then more issues were found and, you know, it became a whole thing and things got delayed a couple of extra months and, you know, now we're here. But a few days ago, we saw the version get bumped from 2.99 to 3.0.0 RC1. Also, if we look at the milestone page, there, in a moment, when it says load, are no milestones left open. Now, RC means release candidate. This does not mean that GIMP 3 is 100% complete. But being a release candidate build, if no major issues are found, if nothing causes a big problem, if there's no regressions, if everything they want to add has actually been added, the build that is available today is going to be GIMP 3. Now with how many videos I've made talking about how GIMP 3 is almost done, GIMP 3 only has a little bit left, GIMP 3 is going to be released this year, I honestly thought this day would never come. I have been using the GIMP 2.99 development branch for probably six, seven months. It's had some crashes as I've been going, especially making use of Gaggle plugins, but I had not updated probably for about three or so months. So I didn't realize how things had been improving and moving up to the new version, I was pleasantly surprised. From my experience, and granted, I don't use every single feature for making my thumbnails, which is the main thing I use GIMP for. I have a, like a workflow and I do the things in the workflow and that's basically it. Everything I do, rock solid, and I'm more than happy to recommend it today. And here, we have GIMP 3. Now, the layout you're seeing is not the layout out of the box. I use Photo GIMP. Yes, even though it hasn't been updated in about four, five years, at least like a proper update, Photo GIMP still works perfectly fine in GIMP 3. So if you want to keep using it, go ahead and do so. But this is it. It's basically exactly the same, except now it's not GTK 2. Now is GTK3. Most of the changes you see are things behind the scenes, are new functionality. You're not getting a new UI. So if you hated the GIMP UI before, you're going to hate the GIMP UI now. But at least it's very customizable. And again, Photo GIMP also exists. Now, following the RC1 is going to be out soon at some point in the future post, we now have a GIMP 3.0 RC1 released post. We are very excited to share the first release candidate for the long-awaited GIMP 3. We've been hard at work since our last development update to get this ready, and we're looking forward to everyone finally being able to see the results. Of course, you could always just run the development builds anyway, but I know there's a lot of people out there that are like running development builds, and whilst an RC is technically a development build, again, it's a release candidate, so it's effectively just a pre-release version of the next release. A release candidate is something that might be ready for GIMP 3.0, but we want the large community to test it first and report any problems they find. As I said, 
I have not come across a single problem. That doesn't mean there are no problems. There are people definitely finding them. So feel free to have a read through this in your own time because there might still be things that are broken. Some of them might be regressions. Some of them might be things that were added, but not added in a way that makes a lot of sense. Other things might just be feature requests. So see what's there, I guess. However, we hope and expect a much larger audience to try out GIMP 3.0 RC1, including many people who've only been using 2.10 up until now. If large bugs and regressions are uncovered that require more substantial code changes, we may need to publish a second release candidate for further testing. Also, some of the bigger issues, maybe not bigger issues, maybe like issues that aren't incredibly important now, those might be done in a following release of 3.1, 3.2, something like that. Now, there have been a lot of changes over the prior developer releases, but this release specifically also brings in some of its own. One of those is a big one. Not really a big one to functionality, but a big one to design. A new Wilbur icon. Honestly, there is a whole video's worth of drama over choosing what the new Wilbur is going to be. There was like one professional artist who was offering their services for free and was really annoyed that people weren't happy with the design they offered. There was an icon that kind of looked like a GNOME icon and looked like a flat hub icon that just didn't really fit the design of what GIMP is that looked like a completely different Wilbur. And then we had this one, which is a more modern looking icon, but still retains what Wilbur is. Still looks like Wilbur that we know and love. I might get around to doing that video at some point in the future, but for now, know the important thing is this is the icon that was settled on. And hey, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like it? Do you prefer the old icon? Would you like to see something different? I'd love to know. And this image is the new splash screen. Honestly, I don't really care that much about a splash screen because I want to see it for as short amount of time as possible. I want the application to open and then I have it open. But this is here. Also, they are probably going to be changing it much more frequently than they had done in the past. So you're not going to see that for like the next 10 years. Plus, there have been improvements to the icon set. Not necessarily changing the icons, but making them easier to work with. So, the legacy icon theme was mainly raster PNGs. This is fine, but it's not great for scaling. So, now they've been remade as SVGs, scalable vector graphics. So now you can do basically whatever you want with them and they'll always look crystal clear. Now, color space improvements have been a major focus of GIMP 3. GIMP is just, for the longest time, not really been viable for professional color work. That is not maybe perfectly changing for GIMP 3, but is definitely improving and getting to the point where you might actually consider it at least for entry level work. However, that doesn't mean that no companies have ever made use of GIMP professionally. I didn't realize this, but apparently one of the first Google logos was made in GIMP. Apparently. Now, to be fair, a lot of those early logos aren't the greatest of logos. They're logos, right? Like they do the they do the job. This one especially is a bit uh bit funky, but <laughs> I kind of wish we could go back to this. I'm kind of sick of this like clean modern design. Let's go back to whatever the hell this is. And with these improvements, what is very important is ensuring that an old XCF file, so an old GIMP file from GIMP 2, or even from GIMP 1, can still be opened in a modern version of GIMP and actually still function. Now, if you save something in a modern version, it will not load in an older version, but you should be able to keep your old files and bring them with you basically forever. As long as the file doesn't get corrupted through some file system issue, it should always work and should always produce the same result or a compatible result. Sometimes you might change how layers work or other things like that, but the result you see should not break 
the file you have. And from my experience, at least going from GIMP 2.10 up to 3.0, which is going to be most people that are migrating GIMP, it works fine. There's no issue at all. Everything just works literally the same way. Now, of course, moving into 3.0, there's going to be changes in how the API functions. And basically, now that API change has been finalized. So if you want to migrate something from 2.10 up to 3.0, now is the time to do it if it hadn't already been done so. A lot of things basically were already finalized anyway, so things that are still actively being maintained that needed to be migrated, in many cases probably already have. To be fair, a lot of the stuff we have for GIMP is like really, really old functionality that nobody maintains anymore. But also there's just general changes to how the plugin system even works to begin with. There's the addition of Gaggle plugins and all this fun stuff that I think GIMP 3 is really going to allow a lot of people to just do things that were not possible with GIMP before, which, you know, is nice. It's very nice to bring GIMP up to... I wouldn't say a modern standard, but a usable standard. <laughs> now, non-destructive editing was a really big addition to me. Being able to take an image, edit the image, apply effects to the image, all this fun stuff, and then being able to undo those effects, or modify those effects, or rearrange those effects, and not have to start from the raw image again, or undo all of my changes, is such a giant workflow improvement. And I don't know why anybody would want to go back to destructive editing. But if there is a reason why you might want to do so, there is now an option to auto merge filters. So for whatever reason, it's going to be untoggled by default because you shouldn't be using it. But if for some reason, destructive editing is just the thing you want, it's still going to be there. With one exception, you cannot apply this on layer groups. So if you apply a filter to a whole group, that is going to be non-destructive. I don't know why the merge filter option is not available for that one. Maybe it's too complicated on the back end or some other weird thing. I would assume you would just merge each individual layer one by one, and then that's how you would merge the group. But whatever the reason, it's not going to be available on groups. Now, yes, GTK3 is abandoned pretty much, but the move to GTK3 by GIMP3 did bring a really big change. If I open my terminal and I run Xprop and I try to click on the window, you're going to notice nothing in the terminal happens. That is because this is no longer an X11 application. It is not running through X Wayland. Is it something that most of you are going to notice? Probably not. It does mean the resizing issue I talked about in a prior video is no longer there, but that's such a minor thing. What's more important though, is it's just not using X Wayland. However, temporarily, that did come with a minor regression. You weren't able to use your scroll wheel to scroll through dockable panels. It's just because that feature wasn't there in the toolkits, so they had to go and re-add it, and they didn't really consider ever using it because most of the developers don't use it, but they added the feature at some point in the past. And, you know, if you add a feature, somebody's going to use it. And if you add a bug, somebody's going to use it. Uh, this this wasn't a bug. This was an actual feature. So they went ahead and re-implemented because turns out there were users actually using the feature, and it just made sense to be there. Also, one of the really big GIMP memes is finally dead. And no, I'm not talking about the shape tool. There's going to be a shape tool at some point in the future. Not now, though. Instead, I'm talking about basic text operations like inner glow, bevel, and various other styles you want to do to your text, like outer glow and borders and things like that. No longer... Do you have to do it through hacks? And no longer do you have to go and manually get the plugins and then add them into GIMP just to have this basic functionality. Now it is shipping in GIMP. There are still some additional plugins here which might be useful that you still want to grab. So it's not to say that you don't want to use these plugins, but the main plugins that people care about are now shipping inside of GIMP. If you're curious about them, I always use them in the thumbnails on this channel and also the thumbnails over on the gaming channel. So, you know, clearly 
No one's pointing them out as being weird, so they're doing what you would expect from a border and a glow and a shadow and things like that. Technically shadow you could already do through other means, but this shadow works a bit nicer. Now I don't know why this is relegated to so low in the blog post, but future changes to the release process. We are well aware the path to GIMP 3.0 has been a long one. That's one way to put it. And GIMP 2.10 users have not had access to all the great new features we've been working on over the years. That is the biggest problem, right? Like, there's been a lot of improvements to GIMP that you just could not use if you're on the uh, the 2.x branch, or specifically 2.10, because it's been 2.10 for so long. Going forward, we are restructuring our development process to decrease time between releases. As briefly mentioned in our post 3.0 roadmap, we want to focus on smaller, feature-focused releases. This means we are aiming for GIMP 3.2 to come out within a year after the final release of 3.0. So it's not going to be as big of a release, but it is going to be a more frequent release cycle to get features out there quicker, rather than in 2050, as is often joked. I like to say the heat death of the universe, but that also works. Micro-releases with bug fixes may happen in between. This is the way to do it. Making sure things are actually getting released, rather than sitting on a giant release and then never getting it out there. Now, my suggestion is just go and give GIMP 3 a try. Yes, it still has issues. Yes, it's not 100% done, but it's mostly there. Right now, it is still in the beta repo, so it is a slightly different way to install it, but the flat pack is the easiest way to do so. If you're on Windows or Mac OS, there are binaries available over there as well. If you don't want to use a flat pack, uh, there are other ways you can compile it from source and do that stuff if you want to. Just, just use a flat pack. Just use a flat pack. I've been using the flat pack for ages now and it works fine. <laughs> so, let me know. Are you happy that GIMP 3 is just finally done? Like, the biggest meme of the Linux world is finally coming to an end. I know I am, because I've made so many videos on this topic and every time it's been delayed. So we'll see what happens, hopefully soon. I'm still gonna use RC1, RC1's basically done, but hopefully the RC status can go away soon as well. Maybe the end of the year, maybe, probably not, maybe early next year. Hopefully, hopefully not any longer than early next year. Please, let's not be in an RC for seven months or seven years to make it worse. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and green is my pepper.